so let's um, in this lecture let's talk about carbon nanotubes hmm. okay so carbon nanotubes as the name itself suggests they are hollow carbon fibers hmm. so what is a tube tube is a hollow fiber right you can also look at it this way that if you take a graphene sheet and you roll it up then what you get is a tube like structure hollow cylinder basically that is what we are talking about okay so from the two graphene lectures now you already know what are nm notations and you also know that you can have when you make tubes then you can have armchair type of tubes you can also have zigzag type of tubes and you can also then have a mixture of the two which is known as the chiral carbon nanotubes okay now we are still talking about single walled carbon nanotube huh? so whenever we were uh, you know till now whatever we discussed um, the rolling up the graphene sheet and so on then we are still talking about just one graphene sheet hmm, and then we roll it up so we get what is known as the single walled carbon nanotubes now you can also have multiple walls multiple walls means multiple concentric cylinders so we are talking about one cylinder but we can also have multiple cylinders in that case you can call it multi walled carbon nanotubes okay again like all other carbon materials this material also has a history hmm. this material was also reported in the past hmm. even uh, there have been publications in the 1950s and 60s where uh, at least hollow filaments were reported hmm. so the name carbon and tube was probably not used but hollow filaments were filaments were definitely reported um, and also you see whenever there is vapor of carbon and whenever the end then there is also some metal nearby hmm. and there are high temperatures i mean that is when you will have vapors of carbon because when we say vapors of carbon typically you're uh, cracking a hydrocarbon hmm. or you're doing you're performing some very high energy uh, let's say let's say uh, manufacturing processes on graphite like laser ablation of graphite or any other type of carbon so in that case you have you may have these vaporized carbon atoms and very they they contain a very high energy so at that time if you also have a metal catalyst present then 99% you are going to get some sort of carbon hmm, okay carbon deposits hmm, okay now if these catalyst particles they happen to be particles and they happen to be in the nano scale hmm, in that case the deposits on top of them will also be nano scale so you can get these deposits and you know, ultimately a tube can come up hmm, okay so this is basically this is this these kind of processes were also observed in the near uh, for example blast furnaces in the past because in a furnace you are typically processing a metal carbon is almost always present because there is some hydrocarbon that is always present sometimes even if you are not intentionally using a hydrocarbon uh, but you use certain types of oils or you will use some sort of fuel for the furnace so from the vapors somewhere the carbon can always in some hydrocarbon materials always present and then you can find these kind of deposits where you have carbon nanotube carbon fibers filaments that are hollow or not hollow all of these kind of structures um, can be observed and they have also been um, you know analyzed and reported in the past characterized hmm. so okay let us uh, get started with this so as i already now mentioned all of this to you this is one picture uh, that i have for you from 1952 hmm. So this is a, uh, an, a transmission electron micrograph of uh, uh, hollow carbon uh, filaments, hmm, which was published in a Russian journal. Okay, so here I have uh, mentioned also. So recently it was published in a in a, uh, a in a review article. So I have mentioned both the review article and the original publication. The the point is that uh, these reports were already there in the 1950s. Hmm, okay. Uh, and what is also interesting is that transmission electron microscopy also existed uh, uh, in the night. So actually, uh, this uh, electron microscopy has also its own history, already started in the 1930s. Mm. And it was in a reasonably advanced form already in the you know 40s and 50s. Anyway, uh, okay, so let us talk about carbon nanotubes. One interesting thing about it is that although we, in, for, for understanding the crystal structure, we often say that these are rolled up graphene sheets. And this is because that makes it easy, you know, for us to understand, okay, uh, especially also in, in the uh, terms of um, NM notations and so on. But chemically, these tubes are more closely related to fullerene-like structures. Hmm. Why? Because these are curved structures. So you know that we have curved carbon structures. This is, uh, you know, one uh, schematic of some spherical structures, spherical carbon structure, let's say Buckminster Fuller. Okay, and now you see um, this is your tube which is capped at one end. Hmm. So I'm talking about capped tubes. Most of the tubes are actually capped at one or both ends, but you can also have open cylinder like tubes. Hmm. Okay, so but when you have the capped 
gap now what you see is this curvature in the bottom hmm. the same thing that you see in the fullerene okay what does this mean this means that you you have to have some non six membered rings right only then you will get this kind of curvature so this is actually a type of curved carbon and in fact that is the reason uh, here and there you will even find that carbon nanotubes are fullerenes you know you find these statements a carbon nanotubes are fullerenes so don't get confused this is uh, also this is how we learnt in this uh, course that carbon nanotubes are a part of the fullerene family because of the fact that their hybridization state is not necessarily sp2 type but of sp2 plus n type hmm. so if you um, so yeah that is why the, this lecture where we talked about sp2 plus n type uh, materials you should also definitely go uh, go over it one more time uh, for you to understand that if uh, in order to have this kind of curvature you should have some kind of uh, you know non sp2 bits if you have completely sp2 uh, type hybridization then you are going to have completely flat structures okay so here it is also important that definitely in the case of capped carbon nanotubes we we have some non six membered rings but what about the you know the those which are open um, you know on both ends just rolled up graphene sheet in that case well also there is a certain curvature hmm, because we are talking about the cylinder here right so again there is in this direction there is definitely some curvature right um, so we still don't have a pure sp2 type hybridization we have still sp2 plus n however in that case the value of n can be much 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 smaller hmm. always compared to a completely uh, closed structure uh, you're going to have the value of n that is much smaller hmm. but you will not have a perfect sp2 hybridization in the case of carbon nanotubes okay fine so uh, what else um, yeah so the, the point is that i told you that carbon nanotubes and similar structures were observed on blast furnaces and here and there but still dedicated efforts to understand carbon nanotubes and their utilization in technological application huh that only started after let's say 1985 because in 85 fullerenes were discovered hmm. so buckminster fullerenes and that discovery really helped uh, you know the entire carbon community because it it told us that uh you know curved structures can also be highly stable hmm, curved carbon structures okay so when we saw fullerenes then there was also interest again you know so, sort of people uh went back to carbon nanotubes like yeah we also have seen a tube like structure so then and also by that time transmission electron microscopy had become a very common technique although it did exist in the past also but in the past only very few universities had tems but then by uh, by 1980s or so it became more and more common technique you know nowadays pretty much you know many many universities have um uh, tem uh, setups okay so this after 1985 then many people started working on carbon nanotubes and especially one uh, particular paper that is worth mentioning is the paper by ejima so uh, this paper it was published in 91 i think and this paper actually uh, sort of helped a lot in making carbon nanotubes more popular hmm, okay there are many other publications as well as i mentioned that i will not go uh, more into the details of the history of carbon nanotubes in this lecture but um, similar to graphene you can definitely find it uh, you know if you're interested then uh, there are many uh, resources which talk about the history of carbon nanotubes okay so um the applications of carbon nanotubes again i will not go into the details because there are so many applications of this uh, this uh, material what you need to understand is okay you, we already know that electronic properties of this material are interesting hmm. something that can be conducting and semiconducting and if you join one conductor one semiconductor then you can get these you know single element conductor semiconductor junctions there are so many things that you can do with it hmm. so already there are a lot of uh, you know electronic applications especially field uh, effect transistors are uh, you know they, they their uh, carbon nanotubes are used a lot there are various other different types of sensors can be uh, made using carbon nanotubes there are electrochemical applications they can be used as single tubes as well as the bundles of tubes or the forests of tubes when a lot of tubes grow uh, together um, you know parallel to each other then what you get is you what that is what you call a forest of carbon nanotubes huh okay so vertically aligned carbon nanotubes hmm. you can also get not aligned carbon nanotubes that will depend on your cvd parameter so we are going to talk about cvd um, you know uh, after a couple of slides okay so the idea is that you can use uh, carbon nanotubes for a lot of applications what is also interesting is the mechanical strength of carbon nanotubes uh, it has been predicted that it is thousands of gigapascals hmm. not 
this has not been experimentally validated, but there, here and there, there are scattered studies. Hmm. But the idea is that if you think about it, when we were talking about carbon fiber, so let's compare the, uh, you know, because it's fiber like structure. So let's compare it with carbon fibers. Carbon fibers, uh, why do they have cracks? And, you know, whenever we were talking about the, you know, weaker links in your carbon fibers. Mm -hmm. So why do you have weak links and weak points? Because these are the points where you have voids of some kind. Mm -hmm. Or because you were deriving the carbon fibers from polymers by heat treatment of polymers. There is a higher probability of containing defects. Mm -hmm. So defects and voids, these are your weak links. Mm. And those defects can come all the way from the polymer, you know, in the beginning itself, if you had some lump of polymer or something like that. So that is the reason that is where your uh, fibers can break. But that is not the case, um, you know, with carbon nanotubes, because in most cases, carbon nanotubes are um, pr uh, prepared by a bottom up processes. Huh? This is an atom by atom deposition hmm. or if not atom by atom, at least it is smaller units coming together. So it is a bottom up process. And in the case of bottom up processes, the defects are much, much less. Hmm. And especially when you have extremely thin walls, whether it is single or multi walled carbon nanotubes, you have very thin walls of these tubes. There, it is not even possible for very, um, you know, large defects to, uh, to exist. Even in the case of carbon fibers, when as we keep reducing the diameter of the fiber at some point, what we have is, um, uh, is you know, we, the defects cannot be there anymore hmm, because that becomes a very high energy uh, structure then. Huh? So that is why it has been predicted that carbon nanotubes have thousands of gigapascal, uh, you know, that is the Young's modulus. Hmm, okay, but some of it has been experimentally validated, some not, because also you can imagine that um, you have these extremely, uh, you know, thin structures. Single walled carbon nanotubes can be, you know, 1.72 nanometer in, in diameter. Hmm. The aspect ratios um, are typically high hmm, uh, for carbon nanotubes. Even uh, they, there have been reports of several centimeters long carbon nanotubes. But the point is that it's also a very sensitive thing. Uh, if you have single walled nanotubes, if you have multi walled nanotubes, already the properties differ a lot. Hmm. Also, the electrical properties differ a lot. Huh. So if you learn that when you have zigzag type carbon nanotube, hmm, in that case, what happens is when your tube when the face of your tube is zigzag type, the path that electron needs to take, that is perpendicular to it, right? Uh, the path during the electrical conductivity. So for the zigzag type carbon nanotubes, you actually have armchair type of path for the electron. Hmm. Or, and for the armchair type of uh, carbon nanotube, you actually have a zigzag path where electron can easily travel. So these, arm, these type of carbon nanotubes are then uh, pretty much always metallic. Hmm. And the zigzag type, however, can be metallic as well as uh, semiconductor. And so zigzag type, when I say the path of the electron is armchair type. Okay. Um, and the chiral nanotubes, they can also be uh, both semiconductor metallic. In most cases, they are metallic because once the diameter of the tube increases, hmm, in that case, uh, they are more, uh, you know, towards being metallic rather than uh, rather than having, having a band gap. Okay. So all of these things uh, we will uh, discuss briefly. Okay, uh, because of the mechanical strength of the uh, carbon nanotubes, whether it is validated uh, uh, experimentally or not, but the point is that carbon nanotubes are already uh, extensively used in, in composite materials. So you can add uh, tubes directly like what we did with the short fibers. Hmm. Or you can also make ropes of carbon nanotubes. Now you have strands huh? and with the strands, uh, you know, you can either braid the strands and then uh, make uh, these uh, nice uh, preforms or you can directly also add these uh, strands inside your um, your uh, polymer matrix so you can also make uh, carbon uh, based composites hmm. so see uh, so carbon nanotube reinforced plastics that's also a new and advanced area of research okay so here are some more uh, publications so the one that i mentioned the egmas publication and also Pretty much at the same time, Betune et al. Et al also uh, published a paper in uh, Nature. So these two papers actually are uh, very, um, you know, commonly uh, cited when it comes to carbon nanotube. Huh. Okay. So now let us talk more about the properties and then we'll talk about the manufacturing. Okay. So about the properties of carbon nanotubes. So I already mentioned that you have single walled carbon nanotubes, you have multi walled carbon nanotubes. Now these things these properties, also the electronic properties, can also be used for classifying your carbon nanotubes. Huh? 
So, couple of different types of classifications that I have mentioned here. So, one is based on the number of moles. So, here probably with this picture, it will become more clear that you have a single cylinder or you have concentric multiple cylinders. Yes, one important thing is that these uh, multiple cylinders, if you if you see it, uh, you know a cross section, huh, then they are not A B A B A type arranged. Huh? They are turbostratically arranged. So, they are not. Uh, there is no 3D crystal geometry. Okay, also because it is a carbon structure, uh, so it is difficult for uh, such structures to have a 3D uh, arrangement anyway. Okay, so this is one type of classification. The second one is based on the chirality. So we already talked about chiral and achiral type carbon nanotubes. There are two achiral type of carbon nanotubes, zigzag and armchair, and the chiral ones are everything that is not zigzag or armchair or whenever it's a mixture of the two then so there is you can imagine there is a higher probability of finding chiral, chiral nanotubes huh? and also zigzag armchair this these geometries only exist when it uh, when you have a single walled carbon nanotubes and not in the case of multi walled so often in most cases what you have is a chiral structure now by the way what is a chiral structure what is a chiral structure so a chiral structure is something that can be Super, superimposed on its mirror image hmm. okay and on the other hand chiral cannot be superimposed on its mirror image so uh, this is the definition hmm. so basically um, sometimes people also explain it with hand you know handedness or uh, or not but um, in terms of chemistry this is the definition so if uh, you have a, the mirror image so you can imagine that for the zigzag type of carbon nanotubes you know you can superimpose it on on the on its mirror image and that is why that is known as a chiral and, and the others when it is a mixture then it's difficult to so you know um, the left will look right in the mirror and you cannot superimpose it okay so again i have drawn these two um, images here and what you can see what i was also mentioning before is that if you have a zigzag type of geometry here hmm, okay so this is your zigzag type of carbon nanotube but if an electron has to flow through this hmm, then there is no zigzag path you know if the electron moves into this direction hmm, um, so in that case you can see that there is uh, you know now the path is not zigzag on the other hand here here you see the armchair type starting or the, the face of your carbon nanotube is, uh, has this armchair symmetry but here you can find the zigzag path for the electron to to travel during electrical conductivity hmm. okay so um, fine now the, here um, please uh, also look at the lecture on uh, graphene and also the crystal structure where we also talked about the nm notations and so on okay uh, what else so this is this was the classification based on um, based on the um, you know structure crystal structure as well as number of walls what else? We can also uh, classify uh, carbon nanotubes based on their properties. So I already mentioned that you have either um, semiconductor type carbon nanotubes or you have metallic type. So this is already a very uh, easy way for us to classify. Mm. However, what is also interesting is the reasons for carbon nanotubes to be um, semiconductor. Uh, we know a little bit about the path of the electron. We know a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, the zigzag and armchair type symmetries and where it is easier for the electron to travel. However, one thing is that as the carbon nanotubes become larger in terms of diameter, as their diameter grows, even if they are single walled, although single walled carbon nanotubes typically do not have, uh, you know, um, uh, much larger diameters because then their their formation becomes difficult their enthalpy of formation goes very very high but still whenever you have larger diameter carbon nanotubes they tend to be conducting hmm, rather than semiconducting so um by the way in the case of semiconductor also i will mention the um yeah i'll, I'll mention the uh, the the band gap somewhere okay the point is that the conductor man, uh, nanotubes, of course, they have a zero band gap hmm. and there is a higher probability for you to find them. And that is why we can also, uh, this is also one way of classification, of course, capped and uh, open. Uh, this is also another way of classification. Okay. Now, um, you learned in the NM notations uh, lecture how to calculate the chiral vector for a carbon nanotube. Hmm. Okay. So, n m notations again n is uh, uh, is the number of times that you travel along the lattice vector a1 hmm. and 
the other lattice vector whatever you can call it a1 a2 whatever hmm. the other lattice vector whatever distance you travel along that that is your m hmm. okay so i'm saying this a1 a2 are exchangeable that is why i'm so n and m does do, don't have to be associated with any so because you can take your vectors in any direction it is a six fold symmetry in your uh, graphene sheet okay so the point is that n times a1 m times a2 will give you this kind of uh, this chiral vector hmm. so see this is how you uh, uh, represent your chiral or circumferential vector hmm. and then that is n a1 plus um, m a2 okay so here i have put the vector uh, marks and it should be also on a1 huh okay so the the second um, uh, important uh, uh, the relationship for you is how do you calculate the diameter of a uh, oh, sorry radius of a carbon nanotube so radius of course you have uh, 2 pi divided by uh, so c divided by 2 pi yeah? so c is basically a circumferential vector so that divided by 2 pi hmm. and then there is this uh, particular formula which uh, which relates it to the n and m coordinates okay Hmm. So these are the so the, I have not been very careful with the vector notations here. So just see C also has a vector um, notation here. Okay, fine. So here I was mentioning that um, I will say I will tell you what is the band gap. So 0. 0.4 to 2 electron volt is volt, volt is uh, this. There have been different types of carbon nanotubes. Different uh, lengths also can affect the band gap. Hmm. and different diameters of course uh, influence the band gap. So in different publications between 0. 0.4 to 2 electron volts uh, of uh, band gap has been reported for carbon nanotubes okay um yeah so as i mentioned before met, uh, these uh, multi volt carbon nanotubes because of their larger diameters they tend to be often uh, metallic hmm, rather than uh, semiconducting okay so now in the next couple of lectures we are going to talk about the fabrication techniques for uh, for carbon nanotubes